This is the TO4E turbo that I was running on my 3.1 Cavalier uh, before I blew it up. Uh, managed to get me a 12.7 and a quarter mile, just shy of 110 miles an hour. Uh, that about 12 pounds of boost ish. Worked well, still in awesome shape. I got this in October of 2021 uh, from Amazon from Max Speeding Rods. Uh, I've mentioned that before in some of my previous videos. Uh, I said for, I think it was a whole 180 Canadian plus taxes when I got this one. Uh, it was installed, I think it went on the car in March of 2022. Uh, first got it running in uh, late April, early May of 2022. So pretty much ran it for just to, for 2022 season and 2023. Uh, Blew up that engine in August of the 2023. So not a lot of time put on this one, but it worked great for the time I had it. But as you guys know, I've upgraded the engine from the 3.1 Gen 2 60 degree V6 to a 3400 Gen 3 60 degree V6. And again, they're a little bit better flowing engine, a little bit bigger. So we've gone to another Max Speedy Rods Turbo. We've gone to the GT 3582. So you can see I've already opened this up. Again, I opened up when I first got it just to make sure it was in good shape, nothing majorly wrong with it. And we're gonna do a comparison here between that one and this one. We'll just uh, give me a second to get it out of the box here and I'll uh, show you what's up. So there's literally probably these probably a hundred different uh, unboxing videos of this. 3582 turbo from uh, Maxi Rods, some with uh, this version. So this is the uh, the cheaper version with the uh, the non billet wheel and the uh, the lower the lower iron uh, hot side. Um, and this one only cost 160 plus tax, so to my door 180 Canadian. Pretty good deal, even cheaper than the smaller turbo, which is just crazy. And this one actually has the uh, the embossment of the Max Speeding Rods, which again just a nice touch there um but you can there's a million different uh unboxing videos of these things out on uh, youtube so i'm not going to get into too much detail on that one what i am going to do though is show you the differences on compressor map of how this one compares to, on the 3.1 versus this one on a 3400 and i'm also going to show you what this one would look like on a compressor map with a 3400 we're going to be making some assumptions based on volumetric efficiency etc but just going to do just so we can try to do an apples to apples comparison as best we can just uh based on the uh information we have at the time uh as you can see it comes with your typical gaskets this one has got a four inch inlet here versus a three inch inlet on this one uh, i believe it's a 57 uh, mil turbo on this one uh, versus i think 50 on that one and um, or sorry, maybe 54 now by memory i'll uh i'll find the specs and i'll post those up for you i'm gonna show you what the inside of this one looks like so i'm gonna take the housings off i'm gonna show you what the inside looks like um and just with the castings and give you an idea what we're looking at here so yeah inside of this one she's fairly not much we put the two of those side by side the actual diameter coming out of that is pretty much the same. The outside casting here is thicker, so that's going to require a different, uh, a different elbow or a different connector there. But the inside, inside diameter, not much difference there. I'm going to also take the hot side off here so you can see what it looks like inside there. I'm going to show you quickly with the light. This one, when I did get it, I did a little bit of uh, port matching on there. A little bit of smoothing out on the entrance, entrance here. And it's all carboned up now so you can't really see it anymore this one here what's it look like uh, she's got some rough, roughness to it but nothing crazy but we'll uh we'll take it apart and show you from uh all the angles here and we'll in just a second uh, we'll take those apart and be right back to show you that yeah, so we just like that we've got it all taken apart if anybody that's done these kind of things knows how simple it is, you just got to loosen up your screws there, take off the mounting plates, or mount the uh, center section there, and it comes apart. Obviously, you got to do that to clock the turbo the way you want it anyways. So, so we'll start with the compressor side. You can see 
there. Nice and smooth, a little bit of a sharp edge right there going where it does a transition into the uh, the main feed of the air inlet there. Nothing crazy. Uh, this one has the anti-surge holes there, which uh, feed down into this ring in there, I believe. You can see the ring in there. That feeds up to those holes, which this one with the TO4E does not have that. Again, you can see the difference in difference of size there. This one will literally almost fit over top of that one. That's one of the reasons why I'm going to have a hard time uh, getting this turbo to fit in the same orientation that the old one did because there's just not enough room. This is already tight with the old one. Uh, what's it look like inside here? So inside, I'll turn just to pop it up like that for a second. Take the light, shine in there. You can see a little bit of casting in there, but not bad for a uh, turbo that's less than 200 Canadian. Shine inside there, same kind of thing. You can see the, the casting in there, but it's just again, I said, not bad. Bang for the buck is uh, pretty dang good with these things, from my experience so far. I've only had one, which was that one, and it uh, worked well for me for the little bit of time that I had it, so we'll try the next one, another one here, I should say. Now, what about the uh, the hot side here? What's the hot side look like? It is heavy. It's got lots of material in here, like you can actually even compare it to that one. Mounting, mounting material right there. This is pretty much double what it even had on the uh, TO4E version. So that's that's awesome right there. And inside here, I was showing before, not, not bad. It's fairly smooth for you can feel a little bit right where the two halves mate there. You can feel a little bit of roughness right there. I might uh, feel a bit of uh, blending on that one, but again, probably not gonna even notice any gains on it, but honestly. Inside there, doesn't look bad at all for, uh, again, for the price. And look at the center section here. So yeah, it's got my fingerprints all over it already, but other than that, this is just the way she came out of the box. And this one is actually uh, oil and water cooled where the uh, TO4E was not water cooled. Um, I've already checked it for play there. Nothing abnormal. Looks uh, good. Again, just uh, can't do, uh, can't really do much when it's not, not on the car as far as how it's going to work, but just first impressions, taking it apart, looking at it like this. I'm uh, quite happy with it so far. Uh, just like I said, just getting it all mounted in there is going to be the uh, the fun part and trying to figure out how we're going to get it to work. Uh, like I said, I'm going to, I got some uh, compressor maps. I'm going to show you kind of how these turbos would look on a compressor map based on uh, at 8 pounds and at 10 pounds of boost. Like I said, on my old one, I, on this one here, I was running about 12 pounds on the 3.1 and it uh, worked well at that at, uh, boost level. Um, I figure based on rough guesstimations, I should be with this GT3582 turbo, I should be able to get about 350 horse at about 10 pounds of boost. Um, my wastegate spring is eight pounds, so I'll be starting out at that. Uh, so that should give me over 300 just, uh, just on that, on this uh, 3400 engine. And we'll uh, see where it goes after that. But we're gonna start out at only eight pounds just until we get all the, some tuning bugs worked out. Um, but yeah, I'll throw those uh, compressor maps up so you can see what I'm uh, talking about. So here's a compressor map for the TO4E 50 trim uh, on my 3.1 liter engine. Uh, you can see we've kind of just made some assumptions as far as volumetric efficiency just to make it easy to read all the way across. Um, but you can also see that it was hitting peak efficiency right around the 4,000 RPM mark, which was perfect for that engine. But by 6,000 RPM, we were pretty much out of steam on that turbo when it was just getting uh, past the 70 uh, percent range there. 
Here's the same compressor map with the 3400 specs on it. It would probably spool up really quick and be fun to drive around town, but not the right turbo fit for this one. It would uh, probably run out of steam on the top end. If I ever do decide to go with a bigger cam, this would definitely not be the right turbo for this engine. So here we've got the 3400 specs laid out over the uh, GT3582 compressor map. Uh, as you can see, much better efficiency range on there, getting all the way up to 79%, uh, right in the sweet spot. There's other guys out there running a similar turbo to this on these same engines, putting down some crazy numbers, nothing I even expect to come close to, um, but I know it should uh, be a good fit for me, and uh, hopefully uh, we can make some uh, good power and run some good times at the track. Thanks for watching, guys. I do appreciate it. We will talk to you later in the next video. Have a good one. We'll see you. Bye-bye.